Number 12 then from the 2022 Mechanics Paper 10 mark question here for the good old block on an inclined plane. A box of mass M is at rest on a rough slope. At rest, no movement. So F equals MA is just F equals zero. The sum of all the forces will be zero no matter which direction you take add their components in. It's held in place by an external force F, and it tells you in the first part F is equal to a half mg for it just to be holding it and no more to stop it slipping down. So it says that. Part A. The box is on the point of sliding down when the force is equal to this. If that's the case, show that this is the expression for the coefficient of friction. Well, I've already marked all the forces in the diagram here, including the friction force, which, of course, depend. That's those forces are fixed. That's the way they act. Friction's variable. It opposes motion, so it would depend whether it's on the point of sliding down, in which case friction would oppose that, or on the point of sliding up, in which case friction would oppose that. So that's the appropriate one here. But anyway, now you just take components in whatever direction is appropriate. Well, out of the various directions, you've, usually you choose either horizontal and vertical or with the slope and per perpendicular. Well, there's two of them with the slope and perpendicular, but only one for the horizontal vertical. So I'll go with the slope and perpendicular. So if we take, first of all, perpendicular to the slope, taking that as the positive direction. So taking components perpendicular, what have you got? Now, perpendicular means I won't be writing this particular one in. So there I've got, going with it, that's the simplest one, I've got R. Also going up the way is a bit of F, but opposing it is a bit of W, and the sum of those forces should come to zero. Now, what are those bits? How much of F? I better put them in. Well, there's the slope. Here's F at the angle theta. So there's the perpendicular, and there's the parallel. So the perpendicular bit's opposite, so that'll be F sine. So that's F sine theta, and the weight, here's the weight going down, here's the perpendicular, and here's the parallel, the portion perpendicular, the portion parallel. That's still the angle theta at the top there, that just comes from this little triangle. If that's theta, then that's its complement, whatever it takes to make up 90, now you're out here, that's the right angle. So if that's the complement, you're back to theta again. But this portion here is next to the angle, so that's W cos theta. So that'll be the first mark. Taking components perpendicular to it. Now I'm going to go for parallel. Parallel to the slope, what have we got? Well, we've got the force of friction. We've got all of that one. Just calling it that. But you've got a bit of F. And again, you've got a bit of W opposing that. And the sum of them will come to zero. And what are those bits? So this time we're going for... Parallel to the slope, that's the cosine this time. So they've switched over. Well, they'd have to switch over because it couldn't be the same for them both. And so that's the sine, that's W sine. Now, I'm not sure if that gets the second mark just now because I've still to do some substitutions. Because I know what W is, that's mg, and I know what F is, that's a half mg, and I know a connection between the two, that's the connection between the two sets of equations here because that force of friction is equal to mu r. So putting in what we know then, so this first one, I'll just have to rewrite them now. So this first one actually says r plus, now f is, it says a half mg sine theta. Don't know if I should have just left the f's and the w's in just now until the manipulation was done, because it's handy just having a single letter instead of several. Minus mg cos theta equals zero. That's one equation. That's just that first one written with the mg's in. And the second one says, now, that force of friction, this one here says you've got, that's mu r plus a half of mg cos theta minus mg sine theta equals zero. That's the second one. So I think the second mark would come there after replacing the F's and W's. Now you can combine them because I've got an expression for R. It's going to be a bit messy though. 
So you could put R instead of that R. So putting one in two would give me this, although it's not strictly one. I just didn't want to have to write that all again with just R at the front. I could do that quite easily by rubbing it out and putting an equal to there. Change that to plus, that to a minus. So this says, now this will be a big long line now. So mu times whatever R is. Now R is going to be taken across. It's going to be mg cos theta minus a half mg sine theta. Then it says that plus a half mg cos theta. Need some room here. Minus mg sine theta should equal zero. No. That was a mark for eliminating r, getting it down to a single equation. Now you need to sort this out. Well, the first simplification could be everything has got a factor of mg, so that could get divided out, and you could get rid of those fractions by doubling everything. So if you do that, if you multiply this whole expression by 2 divided by mg, it should simplify it. I'm not going to multiply those brackets because I just want u in its own. So I don't want to multiply it out just to gather it up again. So that means I'll have mu times. Divide that out, but multiply it by 2. Same applies to this part of the bracket. Multiply it by 2, so that goes. Divide that out, so that just goes to minus sine theta. Plus, multiply it by 2, divide, so that just goes to cos theta. Minus, multiply it by 2, divide it out, sine theta equals 0. So that's made it a lot neater. Now I just need to type solve that then. So mu times 2 cos theta minus sine theta will be, putting them over the other side, 2 sine theta minus cos theta. So mu will be 2 sine theta minus cos theta. Take that, oh, it was about to escape there, get back in. Divided by this, 2 cos theta minus sine theta. Now, the final stage is just to produce this by dividing everything by cos theta. So you could just go straight to the answer and say I've divided by cos theta, or I could show that I've done that. Maybe I'll just sneak it over here. So that's the same as 2 sine theta over cos theta minus cos theta over cos theta divided by 2 cos theta over cos theta minus sine theta over cos theta, obviously. I don't know why I wrote sine theta. I'm just mesmerised by all the sines and cosines flashing in front of my eyes. So that's the technique. Divide every term by cos theta and that produces 2 tan That's just a 1, that's just a 2, and that's a tan. I didn't even notice. For the final mark. So part B then, some changes. When theta equals or theta degrees is 30 degrees. So when theta is 30, the external force is increased. So it's no longer F equals a half mg. You have to write it as kmg, some other number of the weight, kmg. And the, but the essential difference is it's now at the point of moving up the slope. So those forces are the same. Well, apart from F not being a half, it being some other number. But the significant difference is the friction. The friction is the movable one. Friction opposes motion. So this time, if it's on the point of moving up, the friction will be acting down the slope. But apart from that, it's essentially the same as before, except you won't be putting in the sine thetas and the cos thetas because you know it's 30. So taking them perpendicular, first of all, components perpendicular, that would be the good old R. And then it'll be a part of F. Now that was f sine theta, but this time it'll be f sine 30. The w, the portion acting against that, was w cos 30. Cos theta, so now it's cos 30. 
So that should equal zero. But the only thing about that is, you know what those are, you could tidy that up. So this time I'll rewrite that as f. Now the sine of 30 is a half, so that's plus a half of f minus, now w, cos 30 is root 3 upon 2, so that's root 3 upon 2. And maybe at this point I'll just go in with the mg is equal to 0. Now I know that f is equal to kmg, I think I might just leave f as it is, because in the end you have to find f equals, so I'd rather just have this f equals. So I'll leave that one. So there's one equation, so that's a mark. Do the same parallel to the slope with that being, so that was perpendicular, this is the parallel. But it's just the same equations. What have you got this time going parallel to the slope? Well, the only one that goes up is that f, and the component of that is the beside the angle, so it's f cos 30. And the other two here oppose it, so it'll be minus the force of friction. And it'll be minus the w sine 30. So I'll just rewrite them. So that means you've got f, I'll rather leave f alone. So f times, now the cos of 30, that's going to be root 3 up in 2. The force of friction, will that be the mu r? Now there's something about mu. Now that you know the angle's 30, you know what mu is. But it'll be some horrible decimal, so I'll leave that just now. Because I just have to write a symbol instead of a decimal. Minus... And the sine of 30 is a half, so that will be a half mg is equal to zero. So that must be worth, worth a mark. So there we've got that sorted out. And then the same as before, if you eliminate r, the only thing that will be left will be f, which is what you want. So I'm going to put this one into this one. So r would be, I know I could have rewritten to say it specifically, I'm just going to write it down here now. So what I've got, I'm just going to put it all down, substituting the two together, or if you could say one and two. So one and two, just the same technique as before to get rid of R. So putting one and two gives me, I'll just write this here now, root three up and two F. I'm just leaving F alone. You could put KMG if you like, but there's just more letters going to be all over the place. Three up and two F minus mu times, now I'm going to replace R. So r is equal to, I'll put that one first, root 3 upon 2 mg, that will go across, minus a half of f, back to here, that was that part, minus a half mg equals 0. So, substituting for r to eliminate it, now you're just down to an expression in f, and your final answer will just be f in terms of m's and g's. But one thing I could do is I could double everything and multiply out that bracket to free that f to join that f. So doubling everything. Root 3f minus, and that'll be root 3 mu mg, but plus, and doubling that, mu f minus mg equals zero. So now you can gather it up. What have you got for f? You've got a mu and you've got a root 3. So mu plus root 3. And what have you got on the other side? Now these are both mg's. They're going to come across. So mg's. What have you got of those mg's? You've got a 1 and you've got a root 3 mu. And there you are. f equals 1 plus root 3 mu over mu plus root 3 times mg. So that's what you wanted. f is some multiple of mg. So that'd be a mark. Now it's just a case of what is that then exactly as a decimal? Well, you know what mu is? Mu is tan 30 minus 1 over 2 minus tan 30. So I'll get a value for that. You could have replaced tan 30 by 1 upon root 3, but as well just typing it all in. That gives you 0 0.1087 and so on. Now actually there was a mark for that in the marking scheme, just having point, 0 0.109 to begin with. But I'd rather have left that to the end so I didn't have to write that number all the time. Which means there was a mark specifically for that. Oh, so I don't know where the marks go exactly. So if there was a mark specifically for that one... 
then maybe that mark didn't come until you've carried out the substitution and tidied it up because now I'm just going to substitute it into this. So substituting that into that, so carrying this calculation with that mu in it. So typing that in using the answer function for that gives me as an answer 0 0.64556, which is completely accurate because there was no approximations anywhere there using the answer function times mg, or I suppose I'll better round it off, they've taken three figures, 0 0.646 mg for the final mark.